Hi, everybody. My name is Dominique Corbon, and I'm a professor and researcher at Polytechnique in Montreal in the Gérard Research Center. And um, I'm really excited to be at JuliaCon today to tell you a little bit more about the Julia Smooth Optimizers organization. And because that's a little bit of a long name uh, to repeat throughout this talk, I'm going to be calling it the JSO organization. My scientific background is numerical linear algebra and optimization. My graduate years, I was using low-level low languages such as C and Fortran. I used Python subsequently for a number of years. Um, but around 2014, jumped on the Julia bandwagon as I was very excited to hear that it would solve the two-language problem. And that gave rise uh, pretty quickly to several modules that are now still part of JSO and that are going to feature prominently in JSO. Um, and, and notably, um, things really started taking off when I joined forces with uh, Abel Siqueira in Brazil, who was also independently interested in Julia in around 2015. Um, and, and thankfully, uh, his students and my students uh, started also having growing interest in Julia and so uh, that allowed uh, the JSO organization to grow. So JSO today has contributors from around the world. The um, core team is located in my research group in Montreal, uh, but it also uh, in, um, contains Abel Siqueira. Uh, we're using Julia and JSO in the classroom for linear algebra and optimization. And as I mentioned, our uh, you know, organization is driven by research, and so we have a number of publications and a book about uh, one or more of our packages. We currently have around 45 registered packages, and uh, new packages are coming in regularly and are being registered regularly. And they have the bells and whistles you might expect from Julia packages, including documentation, continuous integration, code coverage, and uh, DOI and or citation file. So you're able to cite our packages if you use them in your research. So I'm going to be using the acronyms NLA and OP throughout the talk. So NLA means numerical linear algebra, by which I mean either the solution of linear systems or uh, the solution of least squares or least norm problems. Um, opt is, me, is going to mean a smooth, mostly smooth optimization, so objectives and constraints that possess continuous first and maybe second derivatives, although uh, recently some uh, new non-smooth solvers made their way into the organization. Um, in JSO, we mostly focus on non-convex problems, which means that we look for stationary points, uh, although we're interested uh, equally in uh, linear and convex quadratic programming, including least squares, and put quite a bit of effort into that. But in this talk, I would like to keep things not technical. I would like to not show too much code and not show too much math either. So the objectives of this talk are basically to um, explain who's behind JSO and what we're doing, what the organization contains, provide an overview of packages and the facilities and what you can do with them. Um, but I also hope to stimulate some discussions uh, between JSO and the other optimization developers out there and linear algebra developers out there and uh, hopefully uh, get some of you interested to uh, pay us a visit and maybe drop us a line and come chat about uh, optimization and how a JSO could be incorporated or um, could complement your workflow. One of the overarching uh, approach historically in JSO is that we wanted to put together the best ecosystem for NLA and OPT uh, for researchers to put together solvers um, and to uh, quickly be able to obtain results and benchmark against existing solvers um, in, in view of uh, maybe putting together a talk or uh, writing research papers. So uh, for that, we needed uh, cool, powerful, flexible tools to model problems, to assemble solvers from basic building blocks. We needed access to large 
problem collections. We need it to be able to uh, easily collect solver performance on those problems and channel all that through benchmark modules that would then produce a summary uh, results uh, in the form of plots or tables that could in turn be included in, in publication um, or talks. And uh, all those tools should work together. Uh, writing a quick and dirty uh, solver prototype should be easy. And, and that's kind of the approach uh, that we took. Uh, you will still find some well-known solvers in JSO, even though um, all of them uh, have been implemented with a certain twist that was kind of influenced by the, the research that we were doing. And over, times, uh, over time, the uh, solver interfaces have definitely grown friendlier. And so if you're a non-specialist, you're an end user of NLA or OPT, uh, you should definitely find your way through our uh, packages and um, please don't hesitate to drop us a line or ask for help or tell us about your experience and we're always very keen to hear about that. So here's an overview of uh, JSO packages and I'm going to get out of the way here uh, temporarily and this uh, great graph was produced by uh, Abel so thanks to him. Um, on this graph, we see in red the JSO packages that have to do with modeling. In a purple, the JSO packages that have to do with linear algebra. And in green, those that have to do with uh, solvers and optimization and benchmarking. And then finally, in blue, we see external packages written by others uh, that build upon uh, some of our packages. So in the remainder of the talk, I'm going to be going through the red, uh, purple, and green modules and try to give an overview of how the workflow goes. So let's start with model-oriented packages. The main uh, model-oriented package in JSO is called NLP Models. Uh, NLP Models is responsible for defining the common API through which solvers and users are going to interact with models. And the common API is there so that solvers never have to care where a problem comes from. They only need to know that they can rely on this common API. NLP models defines two basic abstract types. Um, the first is the abstract NLP model, which represents an algebraic, meaning a finite dimensional uh, model of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of this form, which has a, an objective f of x and has equality or inequality general constraints and then has a bound constraint. So we get uh, equalities as a, as a special case of uh, these inequality constraints. And in fact, internally, we distinguish between linear and nonlinear general constraints. The second uh, abstract type is the abstract NLS model, which stands for nonlinear least squares model, which is a special case where your objective is, in fact, the squared norm of a residual function. And it, it's important to exploit that structure in the objective if you want to write efficient solvers for least squares. The NLP model's API looks a little bit like this. It, it allows you to evaluate the objective, evaluate your constraints and their derivatives, and do all these things that a solver might need to do or a user might want to do with a model. And um, so, for example, you'll have, a, you'll have a method called obj that evaluates the objective function at x, a, a function called grad that evaluates its gradient, uh, cons for the constraints, and then jack structure, jack chord that evaluates the sparsity pattern and the values of your Jacobian in, uh, in sparse coordinate format. Um, Jack op, which is, which is a sort of a wrapper around um, a Jacobian vector products and Jacobian transpose vector products um, it represented in the form of an abstract operator that you can, it's just an object that, that you can apply mul to, that you can you know, multiply with as if it were a matrix, um, even though it's an abstract object. Um, and, and, and then there are in place variants of all those methods. And you can do similar things with nonlinear least squares models, except 
in addition to the um, previous API, there are also methods to evaluate the residual function, uh, to evaluate the sparsity pattern and the value of the Jacobian of uh, that residual or to treat it as an operator and so forth. Other model-related packages in JSO include NLP model modifiers that allow you to perform some common transformations. For example, um, you might want to transform a model by adding, adding slack variables, perhaps because you're writing a solver that assumes that the only inequality constraints in the model occur in the form of bound constraints. Um, so slack model would add those slacks implicitly for you. Um, um, a limited memory quasi-Newton model is another wrapper that um, uh, pretends that your Hessian is in fact the result of a limited memory BFGS or SR1 approximation. Um, and so uh, you can interact with this inexact Hessian as a linear operator. Um, we have quadratic models, which um, is self-explanatory. We have LLS models, which represents um, linear least squares models. Um, PDE NLP models is um, a little bit of a different kind that'll be um, discussed in Don Gimigo's talk in this conference um, and is used to represent infinite dimensional PDE constraint models that, that, that will be discretized by a finite element method. And uh, finally, a new kit on the block is a KNet NLP models, which allows you to interact with the deep learning networks modeled using KNet.jl using uh, the familiar NLP models API. An important question in optimization is where do I get my derivatives from? And um, of course, the first uh, intuition would be to hard code them by hand, um, but that's not only painful, it's also very error prone. Um, another possibility that we adopted for a while in JSO is we'll just let someone else do it. And uh, that can be done by relying on external modeling languages. So we have, for example, an interface to the Ample modeling language, an interface to the Qtest engine, an interface to Jump, and an interface uh, to grid app via PDE NLP models. Um, the only disadvantage, for example, of, of modules such as Ample and Qtest um, are that we are limited on the Julia side by the limitation of Ample and Qtest. For example, uh, the two are, are bound to only work with real single or double precision numbers. Um, if you build quasi-Newton approximations, there's already a partial solution here to, uh, to the problem uh, as far as second derivatives are concerned, because those are natively implemented in Julia, and you could construct those approximations in big float, for example, if you wanted. Um, but as far as first uh, and second derivatives are concerned, the module ADNLP models um, builds upon the great Julia AD engines such as forward diff, reverse diff, and zygote, and put that together with an LP model so that a user may decide that either one of those three engines is responsible for any derivative computation in your model. And so forward diff might be responsible for some derivatives, reverse diff might be responsible for others. And in the future, we're actually going to register a number of, uh, of modules that perform automatic structural detection of the partially separable structure in your model. Um, and so that's a different uh, way to apply dense AD uh, to preserve the sparsity structure of your problem. So um, let's talk a little bit quickly about uh, linear algebra related packages. Um, we have two kinds of, of modules in that category. The first kind is factorization methods. And uh, this includes um, HSL mumps and QR mumps, which are interfaces to the uh, low level imp uh, libraries uh, from the HSL to compute the sparse symmetric and definite factorizations. Um, to the MUMPS solver, which is a distributed uh, solver for uh, either general LU or sparse symmetric indefinite 
and QR MAMS, which computes a sparse QR. Um, but we have these uh, other two packages uh, that are uh, pure Julia implementations. And the first is LDL factorizations, which is uh, an implementation of a sparse signed Cholesky factorization. Uh, this package started as a translation of Tim Davis's LDL uh, code, which, which is part of uh, UMFPAC, uh, but it was subsequently uh, improved upon uh, by, by my team. Um, in several respects, and for example, it supports implicit uh, uh, reorderings, and it's completely generic in the sense that you can apply it to, uh, to arbitrary arithmetic types. And then there's limited LDL factorization, which as the name implies, computes a, a limited memory uh, incomplete factorization, for example, for use as a preconditioner. Um, the, the second kind of package in, in this category is iterative methods, and I'm not going to talk about this much because uh, Alexis Montoison is uh, giving a talk in this conference about Krilov JL, which is our main library of iterative methods. Um, but I'll just mention that again, um, uh, uh, this uh, Krilov library contains a number of known methods, but it also contains uh, many new methods that are actually not available anywhere else. Uh, and that were developed in our group. So let's now have a look at optimization-related packages. In JSO, we put together a solver infrastructure that helps you assemble solvers from building blocks um, on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, we have an interface that makes resolves efficient. So I'm not going to explain in this talk how to write a solver, um, that information is available elsewhere, but I can show the workflow that is intended um, when you have a model and um, you want to pass it to a solver. So let's say you have an NLP model that can come from any source and you've instantiated a solver object for one of our solvers. The solver object pre-allocates all the memory that's going to be necessary during the solve and um, some memory that uh, can actually be accessed by the user via a callback. So you're going to call the solve method with this model and the solver, and at each iteration, the user is going to be able to interact with the solver object via this callback. When the solve is finished, what comes out is an object of type generic execution stats. A generic execution stats object basically contains your final solution, your final multipliers, the number of iterations, the solve time, and different statistics about the solve. And at the same time, the model uh, internally stores uh, evaluation counters, such as the number of evaluations of the objective, which is available by calling an eval obj on your model. Regarding solvers, we have two types of solvers. We have interfaces to low-level solvers, such as IPOPT, uh, Nitro, Gurobi, Cplex, and Express. And of course, those are made possible by uh, the amazing packages, IPOPJL, NitroJL, uh, Gurobi, uh, JL, etc. And the intended workflow uh, could work something like this. You could have an LP or a QP in the old text-based QPS format, you might turn that into a QP model by way of the QPS reader module, and that's a QP model that you could pass directly to Gurobi via Gurobi NLP models. But you might also want to choose um, to transform your QP model by adding slack variables, and what you get in return is another QP model that uh, only whose only inequality constraints are bound constraints. And that might be necessary because you wrote a solver in pure Julia um, that expects uh, only bound constraints. And so you might pass that slack model directly to your solver, or you could equally pass it again to one of the low-level solvers, perhaps because you're just curious to know what Gurobi is going to do with those slack variables. So next, we have a number of pure Julia solvers in JSO. The first uh, that I just mentioned is RIPQP, which is a primal dual and two-point method for convex QP. Uh, its uh, specifics uh, is that it has uh, different system formulations internally and is able to use a number of different uh, linear algebra methods 
to solve uh, these systems to compute steps. Um, there's a package called JSL Solver, which contains a number of solvers for unconstrained and bound constrained solvers with variants for uh, problems that have uh, a least squares objective. Uh, cannolis is designed for nonlinear least squares with general constraints. Um, Percival is, is designed for general constraint problem and implements an augmented Lagrangian approach. Uh, Percival is named after uh, Lancelot. Uh, DCI is a solver for equality constraint problems. And uh, there's a relatively new package called Regularized Optimization, which in fact contains four solvers for non-smooth regularized problems, uh, which are problems where your objective is the sum of a smooth term and a non-smooth regularizer. My final topic today is a benchmarking, and uh, we have a number of packages that give you access to large collections of problems in JSO. We, there is QDIST, there's optimization problems, which, which contains uh, natively implemented problems. NLS problems contains native least squares problems, uh, bundle adjustment models, etc. And all those uh, uh, packages could uh, help you uh, assemble test sets to benchmark solvers on. And the way this might work is uh, you build a set of NLP models and then you choose a number of solvers that you want to benchmark and you run each solver on the set of models and you get a set of execution stats for each solver and you're going to combine that uh, in, uh, by, you're going to extract from that the uh, statistics you're interested in and pass that to the package benchmark profiles, which produces these uh, uh, performance profiles that optimizers use routinely to compare different solvers on a common test set. Um, there's a little bit of uh, manual work here to achieve this, and so we've automated the procedure um, in the package called Solver Benchmark. And so the idea here is that you uh, construct a test set, you construct a set of solvers in the form of a dictionary, um, and then you call this method called BMARC solvers, which returns a dictionary of data frames. And these data frames contain all the statistics of each solver on each problem. And you can combine these data frames and extract from them all the statistics you're interested in uh, to produce, for example, uh, markdown tables, let's say, if you're in a terminal or if you're in a uh, notebook, like a Pluto notebook, um, or you might produce uh, really beautiful uh, LaTeX tables for direct inclusion in your research paper, and alongside you might produce performance profiles that are also publication ready for uh, research papers or talks. So to conclude, um, JSO is currently focused on non-convex problems. So some of the things we do not support yet um, are the following. Uh, things like cone constraints or transformation of a, of a seemingly non-convex problem to a convex cone problem um, are not yet part of JSO. Um, we don't support quadratic constraints at this time although that would be uh, relatively easy to, to add as a feature. Uh, the same goes for complementarity constraints, um, and we don't support things like uh, semi-definite problems. So we have quite a bit of documentation available, uh, tutorials and guides, and so uh, you will find um, uh, the, the main tutorials webpage to be a great entry point uh, to become acquainted with uh, JSO tools and workflows. Um, we have GitHub discussions enabled, so please feel free to drop in any time and ask questions or make comments or uh, ask for help. We have a Slack channel called Optimizers, so again, don't hesitate to drop in. And uh, my colleague Yabel put together a fantastic YouTube channel with lots of tutorials in multiple languages about JSO tools. And um, I think there's really a lot to learn from that amazing resource. 
that's it uh, for me. Thank you for your attention. I really want to express my deep gratitude to all the crew without whom the uh, JSO organization wouldn't be what it is. Uh, thank you also uh, greatly to all the external contributors. Uh, thanks for chiming in. Uh, and I hope to see you soon over at JSO.